Occultist Magicians Dr. John D. John D. was born in London, England on July 13, 1527. He quickly took to every discipline which he studied in school and was a very bright student. He became fluent in English, Latin, Greek, and Hebrew. He was by no means the uneducated common peasant. He studied medicine, navigation, astrology, cartography, alchemy, mathematics. During this time frame, mathematics was considered potentially black magic because it was misunderstood. But he was dancing on the edge because alchemy and especially astrology were definitely considered black magic during this time frame. But he was more intelligent than the common uh, individual and so he knew that alchemy was not black magic. But then again, back then, alchemy was a mix between actual chemistry and what today we would consider extreme superstitious magic. And so the lines were blurred back then and uh, it's easy to see how someone could be mistaken if they were totally ignorant on the subject. But he became very astute at astrology specifically and he could see the future, read the fortunes, and you think it's something a very educated person wouldn't be interested in. But back then, astrology to him was just a science. It was literally a discipline that he mastered and was able to use it to his advantage. Queen Elizabeth I became the queen after John Dee predicted it using astrology. John Dee's astrological predictions were so accurate that he predicted Queen Mary would die and Queen Elizabeth I would gain power in 1558. When Queen Mary found out about this royal horoscope, which is extremely dangerous and illegal at the time, she threw John Dee in jail. While John Dee is in jail, there are others that have committed similar acts of treason and black magic or accused of such they were executed under Queen Mary and so he's fearful of his life three years go by and he's still in in jail 1558 comes along and his astrological prediction came true to a T so this isn't just some random person making a random guess he went to jail for this guess faced execution for this astrological prediction and it came true. Queen Mary died and Queen Elizabeth came to power and Queen Elizabeth was very familiar with the prediction. She immediately freed John D from jail and made him her own personal astrologer and because of his prediction coming true she made him immediately her advisor and she was very fond of him and she gave him his own residence where he could conduct his occult practices in private even though black magic was illegal pretty much in London England at the time she deemed any magic John Dee did to be white magic and to be good magic and to be magic ordained by the crown and therefore good magic, white magic, and magic that even God would approve of in the eyes of Queen Elizabeth I. And John Dee continued in his studies of alchemy, astrology, and he most definitely became a doctor, of course, and he was knighted. He became Sir John Dee. I just want to jump to the present for a second. This is a plaque near where John Dee was buried. And it reads, Near this place lie the remains of John D. M. A. Clerk in Holy Orders, 1527-1609. Astronomer, geographer, mathematician, advisor to Queen Elizabeth I. And obviously they have whitewashed and totally cleared and cleaned and totally changed history by omitting the fact that he was first and foremost an astrologer and an alchemist and uh, astrologer and alchemist doesn't sound too good on a plaque these days because 
Not too many people believe in astrology or alchemy, but he communicated with spirits. And I'll talk about that soon with the help of his friend, Edward Kelly. I guess it sullies the reputation of a queen of England to have an official wizard or magician, mage, black magic practitioner, or even white magic practitioner for that matter. But most definitely John Dee was an astronomer, a geographer, a mathematician, but he was an astrologer. Totally different from astronomy, but like alchemy being mixed with chemistry, astrology and astronomy were mixed back then. So they're bending the truth when they even call him an astronomer because he didn't observe the stars and the planets except concerning his magical rites, magical means of obtaining accurate astrological horoscopes and uh, and for navigation he most definitely was a cartographer a map maker and I actually heard someone online say he was a cryptographer now I've never heard or read that he was a cryptographer but cryptography and cartography two totally different things one is a map maker one involves uh, different languages and translating those languages now he could have been both a cartographer and a cryptographer as I said at the beginning of this video he was fluent in four languages and if anyone is going to be a, a, a good cryptographer someone versed in four languages is definitely going to be a better candidate for that but I guess they base the angelic language on uh, something he made up. Now, could he have made up angelic languages, that alphabet? Most definitely he could have made it up with the help of Edward Kelly and the help of his expertise in four different languages. I'm not going to dispute that he couldn't have made it up, but I believe that uh, that is a direct attack on him having contact with spirits. Atheists, they're not going to like the fact that John D. had contact with spirits. That goes against their paradigm. That goes against their script. It goes against their preset, indented tattoo of an idea of how the universe works. And, uh, sorry, the universe doesn't work the way you think it does. And sorry, people that can contact spirits aren't idiots. Some of them are geniuses on the level of Stephen Hawking or Albert Einstein or Nikola Tesla. Some of them, like Dr. John D., study the sciences to an extreme degree and don't consider contact with spirits anything other than another discipline of the sciences that we have yet to even grasp. And John D. might have been an expert in the entire world concerning this subject, and of course he is squelched and on this plaque, they totally omit the fact that he was a magician that did communicate with spirits, that did use a shoe stone. And shoe stone is medieval speak for a show stone. And S-H-E-W is how it's spelled. And a show stone is just a description of a television screen showing a spirit communicating and talking to you. They didn't have TVs back then, but... Dr. John D. and Edward Kelly most definitely watched spirit television back in the 1500s. There's a modern twist on John D. as well, claiming he's the first 007. Now, he may have had the first 007-like secret symbol on his letters that he sent to Queen Elizabeth I, but he was not a secret agent. With the help of Edward Kelly, his black magic friend, he summoned spirits with the help of a grimoire, a book that he obtained, a rare occult book designed to summon angels. And I'm going to talk about that in part two. That part will contain the proof showing that he wasn't a secret agent, that he wasn't just some astronomer, mathematician, that he was an actual magician that actually communicated with spirits 
we have the communications, we have the logs, and we have the history that backs up the fact that he couldn't have known these things without the help of an external force, an invisible external force, spirits. Spirit communication is real. In this day and age, you sound like you are literally insane if you believe in anything that's invisible. Until you start talking about theoretical quantum physics. Oh, it's okay for invisible dimensions to exist everywhere until you're talking about it literally. Like, I know for a fact this invisible dimension exists and these invisible entities exist and you can contact them and you can communicate with them. So part two will contain more of the direct communications and the proof that Dr. John D. was indeed in contact with invisible entities whether they were angels or spirits or demons, interdimensional, aliens, whatever you want to consider them, he was contacting and communicating with intelligent entities that most definitely gave him messages of immediate importance, proving that they were giving him something that he could immediately within days prove was outside external information. And it's very inconvenient for the atheist, but this is indeed the history of Dr. John Dee.